The wagon has black cluster gauges. The Mustang has black cluster gauges. Dora has white gauges. I have never liked the white gauges, so now I am finally going to do something about it. I found these black cluster gauges from a scrapped Ford Ranger. When Ford created the sport track, they rummaged around the scrap parts bin and used the same dash as the Ranger. Now for the tools needed. You'll need a quarter inch ratchet, a 7 and 8 millimeter socket, a 5.5 millimeter socket, an extension, a socket driver, a Phillips screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, and a trim removal tool. Optional is an electric bit driver if you despise manual labor like me. Start by removing the lower kick panel plastic. There are four 7mm bolts to remove. And four clips to pop out. Remove the five 8mm bolts that hold the metal secondary kick panel in place. Next, remove the radio bezel. The dash has two clips in and behind this radio bezel. Remove the three bolts at the top of the dash trim panel and the two bolts at the bottom that were hidden behind the metal kick panel. Lower the steering wheel as far as it will go. This gives us more clearance to work. Pull firmly on the dash trim panel to detach the clips. Work the panel off of the steering column. Then the final step for removing the dash trim panel is to disconnect the electrical connectors for the light switches. These next steps can be done with the instrument cluster still installed but I'm going to remove it for easier filming. Removing the steering column trim is not required. When it is removed, there is more room to pull the cluster from the dash. Disconnect the gear selector wire from the shift lever. Remove the 5.5mm bolt that holds the wire sheathing to the column. There are four 7mm bolts that hold the instrument cluster into the dash. Pull the cluster free and disconnect the electrical connectors at the back. Feed the gear selector wire up and out through the dash. Now for the fun stuff. Remove the seven 5.5mm bolts that hold the cluster cover in place. Now would be a good time to clean the inside of this cover if it is quite dusty like this one. Here comes the careful bit. Gently pry off the gauge dials from the cluster face. I found that using a trim removal tool helps greatly. Remember where each one goes and what position they were installed. Otherwise the gauges will be off when reassembled. I highly recommend doing this with a full tank of gas and the engine at normal operating temperature. Do as I say, not as I do. The old gauge faces are plastic welded to the cluster. Pull firmly to break the weld without damaging the gauges. I used double sided tape to hold the new gauge faces in place using the alignment holes to get everything lined up. Before reinstalling the cluster cover, plug the cluster back into the connectors and verify all the gauges function properly. If any gauge is off, reinstall the dials. These dials reset to zero when power is lost but they are infinitely variable and can be out of adjustment slightly. Once every gauge is functioning properly, reinstall the cluster cover. 
Don't over tighten the bolts, otherwise the old plastic will break. Reinstall the cluster into the dash, then reinstall everything else in reverse order of removal. A test drive isn't necessary, but a car guy takes every opportunity to drive. This is Rooster, and I have gauged this video to be over.